Hello friends, uh, hi this is Ishan Ali, ISM student. So today we are going to discuss about the blood supply to the abdominal region and to the lower limb of the body. Uh, we have discussed in our lectures, in previous lectures about the arteries uh, which mainly provided blood supply to the head region, to the forearms and to the thoracic cavity. Now we are going to discuss about the descending aorta the branches of the descending aorta and from the portion of the body where the descending aorta bifurcate into iliac arteries and then the iliac arteries divide it into internal and external iliac arteries after that they are uh, divided into femoral arteries so all these series we will discuss in our lectures let's begin first of all I will make a descending aorta This is the arch of aorta and this part is a ascending aorta descending aorta arch of aorta and now the descending aorta which travels down to the abdominal region down to the body and from here the umbilical region of the abdomen is bifurcate into two branches so this is the whole structure of the descending aorta Let's revise our lesson. This is from the ascending art of the aorta. Few branches originate, mainly the coronary arteries, which provide blood supply to the heart itself. And from the arch of aorta, three branches, three trunks were originating. The first, that is the left common carotid arch of left common subclavian artery and after this a common carotid artery that is left common carotid artery and after this subclavian uh, sorry brachiocephalic trunk this was the brachiocephalic trunk And from this brachiocephalic trunk, there was two other arteries for originating. That was one was the right common carotid artery, and the other was subclavian artery, right subclavian artery. This right subclavian artery further goes forward and then travels toward the axillary side of the body so there they are called as axillary arteries and after that they will move toward our limbs four limbs and here they are called as brachial artery and after the arm region they bifurcate into two other trunks two other arteries that the one is a radial artery and the other one is a lar artery so this is all about the blood supply in the arterial system to the forearms so this was this was the ascending aorta, the arch of aorta, the descending aorta and these are the arteries originating mainly from the arch of aorta with the first one that is the left subclavian artery then the 
left common carotid artery and the third one that is brachiocephalic artery from the brachiocephalic artery two other branches originate the one that is the right common carotid artery and the other right subclavian artery and this portion of the right subclavian artery is called axillary artery and here they are called brachial artery and which bifurcate into radial artery and ulnar artery. So let's begin to study that the branches originating mainly from the descending aorta. As we know that our abdominal region containing most of the body organs of our body from here in the thoracic cavity, thoracic side we have the ribs, these are the ribs, and here we have a diaphragm, diaphragm, let us assume it is a diaphragm. And after Below the diaphragm we have the abdominal organs, the liver, this is the lobes of liver, liver has four lobes, two large lobes and two smaller lobes and this is the falciform ligament which divide the two lobes and here we have our spleen this is the spleen and here we have kidneys on both sides we have a pair of kidney one on each side Here we have also the lumbar region, this is the vertebra on, and the uh, spinal cord, they are near about the descending aorta on the back side of the body and also this provided blood supply to our gonads and uh, they also provided blood supply to the digestive system, digestive tract mainly the duodenum suppose uh, this is the duodenum this is the duodenum and also the transverse colon and I will head after this this from here branches originated which provided blood supply to the diaphragm they are inferior phrygmic arteries which provided blood supply to the diaphragm and after this we have branches to splenic arteries These are the splenic arteries moving toward the spleen and provide blood supply to the spleen. So I made it visible to you. And after that we have hepatic arteries which provide blood supply to the Hepatic cells of the liver, hepatocytes, and to the liver. And after that, we have superior mesenteric arteries. Here originate the superior mesenteric arteries. We 
which provide blood supply to the mainly the duodenum to the transverse colon and other few parts of the small intestine and after the, this we have two set of renal arteries one set of renal artery this is another renal artery these renal arteries provide blood supply to the renal system that is how kidneys present on both sides of the body after this two set of renal arteries which mainly originate and provide blood supply to the gonads these are the gonadal arteries providing blood supply to the genital organs so the gonads on both side suppose this is our gonad this is the blood supply and after this we have inferior mesenteric artery which provide blood supply to the lower region of the digestive tract including the descending yeah, colon few part of the iliac region so these i made descending colon these are the hostra of the colon so they provide blood supply to this region after that few branches are originating directly from the descending aorta which provide blood supply to the lumbar region of the vertebra they are called as lumbar arteries these are the called as lumbar arteries and after here at the umbilical region this descending aorta divide and bifurcate into two main trunks the first one that is iliac artery this one is uh, right and left iliac common iliac arteries after the here this iliac artery further divided into other branch that is the internal iliac artery and external iliac arteries which give further branches further branches so now i will write their names according to their organs which these arteries provide blood supply for this purpose i use black marker this is called as inferior phrenic arteries inferior phrenic phrenic artery and here we have hepatic artery hepatic artery and here we have splenic artery splenic artery and after that we have superior mesenteric arteries superior mesenteric arteries and after we have there is the renal arteries renal artery 
and after we have gonadal arteries gonadal gonadal arteries and after that we have inferior mesenteric arteries there is inferior mesenteric arteries and after that the bifurcation give common iliac artery common iliac artery and after this the bifurcation gives external external iliac artery and this one there is internal iliac artery so the point here is to remember that here the, there is a ligament present here is a ligament suppose there is this is a ligament and this ligament is known as inguinal ligament this inguinal ligament inguinal ligament from this inguinal ligament the artery that is external iliac artery give rise to femoral artery so before this inguinal ligament we called this iliac artery as external iliac artery and after the inguinal ligament we have we called this external iliac artery as femoral artery which provide blood supply to the lower limbs of our body so let's revise this is the ascending aorta arch of aorta descending aorta which give branches to diaphragm spleen kidneys gonads intestine upper portion of intestine liver and the kidney and also the lumbar region of vertebra so according to their arteries have the name same as data for the organs which are providing the blood supply so this is phrenic artery provide blood supply to diaphragm splenic artery provide blood supply to the spleen and this hepatic artery provide blood supply to the liver and superior mesenteric artery provide the upper side of the intestinal trach the kidneys that is the renal artery provide it blood supply to the kidney and this is the gonadal artery which provide blood supply to the gonads and after we have inferior mesenteric artery provided blood supply to the uh, lower region of the intestine or the digestive tract and after that, that we have two bifurcations common iliac artery left and right common iliac arteries and here two other five bifurcation that is external iliac artery and internal iliac artery after that uh, inguinal ligament uh, after the inguinal ligament we have the femoral arteries so let's uh, talk about the branches of the external iliac artery and the femoral arteries